Survivor News. 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 And we are back this week. Not Q's way, but my way. We are back this week with Survivor News and an epic episode to get through. And I feel like an epic episode deserves an epic panel. Let's welcome back to the podcast the first mate of the Survivor News ship, Jackery Atkins. You might know him from season two of The Circle. And also season six has just aired this week. So Jackery Open chat. Welcome to the podcast. Send chat. Thank you, Bryce. Uh, man, I'm so excited. This was a great episode, and I've got some new. I'm, I'm trying out a new outfit for this episode because you know uh -uh. I'm strapped up in my cute. Uh -oh. How do I stop my camera? How do I log off? Oh, <laughs> you got oh my god! <laughs> you got. <laughs> oh. Oh no, don't show the under bit. Oh, oh, oh. I don't even know how to wear the Q skirt, but I'm wearing it. So I, I mean if yeah. Jack go ahead, Bryce. Oh no, because I was gonna say, I believe the exact quote from Q was if you're a guy and you want a little bit of swag, you better get you a, a Q skirt. Okay. <laughs> but Jack, I thought the hood was supposed to face outwards. It's the jet. It's the Q jet. Well, so if you want the two pockets, you gotta face it front. You gotta have it in the front so you get your pockets here. And then you know, if you got like an idol, you tuck it up in here, fold oh. it over. Oh, Ooh. you're talking about tucking already? Oh, you just got started. <laughs> that's so strange, Jack. The it way is. I did it was. Oh, oh my god! I had mine in the front, oh, so I could just tuck. My god! So I could just tuck my idol. Oh. You know, just I got my beard brush. You just tuck it in there and you keep it oh, moving. Is he is that an idol or is he happy to see? <laughs> I'm I'm not happy to see any of it. <laughs> right. uh, well, uh, rocking his Q skirt. He is clearly a guy and wants a little bit of swag. Let's welcome back to the Purple Pants podcast. You may recognize him from the upcoming season of The Goat or more recognizably known as the first merge boot at Winners at War, <laughs> Wendeezy. I'm here, and I hope y'all notice my lavender shirt to honor my man, Q. Thank you very much. Okay. And listen, last, but certainly not least, if you have ever been in an orchestra, you know the flute is one of the most important things of the percussions. It's not, is it a percussion? It's a, okay. Sometimes. So, so, um, the opposite of a percussion is a flute. You may recognize this person from Big Brother 25, but more importantly, you recognize this person from the Fields Family Cookout. Let's welcome Izzy to the podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My condolences to all that watched Big Brother 25. Thank you. <laughs> Izzy, you are, you are a legend. You are robbed, okay? And Speaking of robbed, we have a lot to get through in this episode, but before we do that, this podcast has exclusively brought to you by the Bryce and Wynn Tour 46. We are in the last half of the stretch of our tour. We have been to New York. We have been to D.C. We have been to Pittsburgh. We've been to Dallas, and we are heading to Chicago next week, and we have an amazing lineup of big brother of survivor players most importantly we have austin will be there and from chicago we are jet setting over to boston boston always delivers we'll be in boston may 8th at game on tickets are available and listen that's not it okay because we are gearing up for the grand finale of what this season has started off a little slow but we go in the Q way and we're going all the way in. We have our Philadelphia stop May 15th. Philadelphia, you know you deliver. And listen, we're coming back to New York May 22nd. And if you know, you know, but there are only a limited amount of tickets available. So if you want to be in the, the graces of Izzy, if you want to be in the graces of Jack, if you want to be in the graces of Wendeezy, if you want to be in the graces of the Purple Pants podcast himself, uh, yeah. You better get your tickets now because our tour started off amazing. And Wendeezy, would you say we it, we are ending 
the tour off like Q tried to end his survivor game off loud, live, and in color. Oh, Tickets man. are available on the Bryce the Wind present Instagram and Twitter or in my Instagram bio, Windows Instagram bio, or you can go to Jack's TikTok and click the link in his bio. Click, click. Click, click. Okay. We got all of that out the way. Jack, the first mate of the Survivor News, kick it off for us. What you got? What you got? You know, usually I love to go kind of chronological or close to that. But how do we not kick this off just getting into the the meat and potatoes, as Bryce likes to call them? I feel like, guys, can we just jump right into that tribal and, and then kind of backtrack from there? Well, yes, because also the edit, like, also because, like, actually what happened that tribe, everything about the editing about hide and seek being all important didn't even come into play at tribal. So it was like, <laughs> it sucked. You know, like, yes, let's jump into tribal. <laughs> I think hide and seek did come into play, but not at tribal, but it did, like, I, I, it, like, I, okay, <laughs> this is how tribal left me. Oh, okay. But I did think, uh, just going into hide and seek real quick, right? Q, right? Q is the master of going one way. Like, say, Izzy, we driving down the street, dun, 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 and I'm like, Izzy, I got the I've got the map quest. Make a left, Izzy. Uh, make a right, Izzy. And all of a sudden, Izzy, like, we lost. And then we magically arrived there. And Q, like, well, I, I, I knew we was going to get there. I took a shortcut. Like, Q <laughs> is just the master of illusion. And it's like, if you are bored out there, Q, if you miss your wife, if you miss your family, and you want to play a game, just say that, right? I feel like Q was like, let's play a game. And then in the middle of the game, he like, oh. Mistake number one, you got Izzy on the podcast. Mistake number two, Jack, you didn't messed up now. Like, I just feel like he... well, everything's like a test, but no one knows they're being tested. And I feel like ultimately, like the biggest issue with this season so far is like everyone is just like heard the buzzword that they shouldn't trust anyone, that no one's trusting ever anyone. And so then like everything's like a mess. Like the only people that maybe actually trust each other are Kenzie and Tiffany. And Maria and Charlie, and maybe Hunter and Tevin, but like now Tevin's gone, you know? So, like, yeah. but that's it. Like, Q, why are you also trying to test Tiffany? That's your girl. Like, that's your number one. Like, what is going on? And also, Tiffany's like seemingly the, the smartest, like, most rational person on the beach. So, I don't know why you wouldn't, wouldn't want to work with her because you're a mess. You're like the most emotional, ego driven player that's ever existed. Like, it's awful. Like, it's like, yeah, it's driving me nuts. Not I would have voted him out so quick at that tribal. I would have been like, so we're voting his ass out, right? Like, get him out of here. Like, I don't understand. Yeah. You know. He's a, he's a genius. Is he, though, Wendell? But, see, I... Okay. Or is he just a genius after the fact? You know, he's so much of... We all know those confessionals <laughs> happened after the shit already but, happened. And it's like, still on the island. He didn't listen, get a I threw, listen, I threw cockle-doodle zoom. No, I did it, motherfucker. It's like, come on. But see, here's my thing. I feel like Q is a magician, right? Like, we know magic doesn't really exist, but when the old creepy guy is like, oh, that's a quarter. I'm like, now where did that quarter come from? Right? Because here's like, I... And again, some of my questions, Izzy, are just like, Wendell might have won Survivor, but Jack is the Survivor almanac, and like his opinion is the only opinion that really matters to me. And it's like, for me, Jack, I really, like, I have to say this episode gave me a lot of respect for Q, right? Because I feel like Q doesn't realize the power that he has, because he essentially shifted the whole course of this season like i really feel like say pause on soda going home and we getting right back to tribal right if we pause or getting right back to camp if we pause it right there right i really feel like out of the 10 somebody was going to win right i really feel like after what q did that person is no longer going to win and someone else is now illuminated like i really feel like what q did was he shifted epic the course. And, right, he shifted the course. It's epic, it's smart, 
But it's like, I don't know if he intended to do that, but now that he did it, he like, I did it. That's what I meant to do, and that's what's supposed to happen. Are we talking about right when they get back to camp, or we're talking about this tribal where so, he does all this I'm stuff. just saying in general, like, if we pause this episode as soon as they got back to camp, right, I mm. feel like out of the 10, somebody was going to win, right? You and mean, like, whoever, right after the soda vote, like, immediate, like, right after the soda yes, vote? Back to yes, yes, oh, okay. right, where it's like, there was a winner, but I feel like after what Q did, that initial winner is no longer the winner. And now it's going to someone else because he has completely shifted the game. And it's like he wields so much power. Uh, but I also feel like like in the way that he wields it is so like, my but God. You, but don't you think that it's like less that he's this like maniacal genius and actually just like that people are like a little scared or hesitant to take the bait like like there was like just a massive opportunity for them to settle down like he might have changed the course of the game but were people really scared that by voting out q suddenly they don't have an end game like girl restart he's a mess like you can't trust anything he said tiffany you're really not gonna push for q at that tribal after finding out that he told everyone about your idol and putting your your names out there i don't know it's like he was a number for a lot of people, though. In 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 all forty seven of the alliances that he was in and restructured, he was a number for all forty seven of those. But people. an unreliable—I don't know, yeah. But an unreliable one that doesn't care about what anyone else thinks. He's un. He, I'd but say that's the beauty of it, right? Like again, I'm not saying that he has shaped the game in a way that he's going to win. I'm just saying he has shaped oh, the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. Agree. And it's interesting, right? Because it's like if there were a little more thought behind it, like him using this power, for me, I felt like seeing Maria and Charlie kind of be like, I don't know what the hell is going on. Them being the most logical and methodical players that we have, the fact that he is able to have them in a world when there is a world that I think that that is like so smart. Is it good for your own game? No, but... I don't know. I, I just feel like there needs to be a course study on Q uh, and how he moves through the game. I think he has people shook in that as if someone says his name, who knows what's going to happen. He said his own name. I would have been like, Q, I want to give you what you want. We're all they, voting, they, right? We're all voting they were right. even scared for him. They were like, I don't want Q to be mad at Q. So I, I think... Would, yeah. Huh? No, keep going, Wendell. I'm sorry. I'm all fired up. I just think it's three I, against one. I can feel it, and I'm never. I'm not backing down on this one. <laughs> oh, I like those odds. Uh, <laughs> now, I just think I think Q is. Um, I think he's great TV. I think he's playing really, really hard. I think he. I think he does have a little uh, revisionist history or a little Monday morning quarterbacking when it comes to. Hey, whatever happened, this thing turned out and he's still on the beach. So he's going to find a story to tell you that that in his head, it's like this was all purposeful. And I love it. I love watching him. And I'd like for him to stay on the beach a lot longer. Yes. So, OK, Izzy, I don't think it's three versus one. I, oh. I haven't even chimed in. I'm so <laughs> just like flabbergasted by this by Q and this whole episode in an, in an amazing way. I don't I feel like I don't know if we've ever seen someone like you who is at, at the center of everything. And I feel like not only do we have no idea what Q was cooking up, I don't think Q has any idea what he's cooking up either. But somehow it is like the main narrative that we're getting. And it's just so confusing. Izzy, I'm absolutely with you that I think unless you're really locked in, locked in with Q, if you're at final 10 and someone wants to go home. Like Tevin said, he's a grown man. Like, if you want to leave, leave. Like, I'm not going to fight to keep someone else in the game oh, for a million dollars. Like, that's – I get it. If you have, like, a crucial vote and you need Q, that's fine. But if you're planning an 8-2 to two vote on Tevin and Q is that eighth vote, then I think you could just cut Q and maybe you get Tevin next time or maybe you readjust the next time. But it is – absolutely insane i don't think you I, I don't think he was a good player at all but there is something that he's doing that there's like a method to the madness that is working in a weird way like bryce said i don't think he's gonna win but it, by god it is really fun to watch and it's just like i insane. thought it was i thought it was interesting at tribal once they finally when tiffany was like can we talk you know they all like, 
separated. I thought it was interesting. And of course you don't get to see everything. So I'm curious what was left out, but I felt like the little mini conversations were ultimately like everyone was just so bewildered instead of seeing what happened at tribal as an opportunity, as an opportunity that like was handed to everyone on a silver platter. And instead everyone was just like either too scared or like didn't have the foresight to. And, and so everyone was just like, uh, I'm confused. So like, we should just do the plan we said, right? Because I'm scared to do anything different. And so I thought that was like, disapp I was disappointed in the other nine at that moment. Even if Q wasn't the one to go home, I'll give you that. But just using that as an opportunity to be like, maybe the slate is blank right now. What do we do with this? That would actually be good, you know? I got three things to say that, man. Okay. Um, a lot of times your opinion is not changed at tribal council. Right. So I'm going to say that I'm going to say that to you as a, as the one well Jackson non survivor also but like as the one like people generally speaking they go into tribal and like you'll try to pull a rabbit out of a hat but people know where they're voting at tribal second oh, that is true Izzy if I were you would you rather no if if yeah. you were on the island at the yeah. end of the day would you rather sit next to Q at the end or Tevin Either one. I think anyone can – Wendell, anyone can sit next to anyone at the end and win the game. You know, like, I don't I don't think yeah. – I, I think I'm going to sit next to Q. I'm going to sit next – but – Hold on. That's my second of three points. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. And my last point is um, – I believe Q is uh, Tony and Kagayan. Listen, you ain't listen. I mean, yeah, but I, I, you know, I don't want to ever see that again. So I don't know. <laughs> he was giving us Tony and Kagayan. He really is, though. Uh, and here's the thing, though, right? To your question, Wendell, would I rather sit next to a Q or a Tevin? I have seen Survivor seasons where if a Q gets to the end, although people, again, similar to Tony and Kageon, although people might be like, what the hell? They might, and again, because you know Q was going to sit up there and say everything that I did, he did. Uh, so, I like, that's actually, I don't know if that's such a black and white question uh, that you're asking, Wendell, because, yeah, like, I don't know. Uh, also, I just wanted to say, after the episode aired, <laughs> Q took to his Instagram <laughs> and posted, first of all, the challenge from last week. <laughs> oh, yeah. With the caption, curveball. <laughs> <laughs> now, did, did, did you throw a curveball or were you aiming to hit the pitcher and it curved? <laughs> curveball. Oh, I think yeah. the thing about Q too here, this like he's he needs to like be in such control that I think this idea of him wanting to quit was okay. He's not in control of this vote. What's the one thing he can control is to say, well, I vote me out," and then you go out and you're like, "Oh, not not to not to project on what would have happened, but it, it would be the type of thing." And I feel like I've seen it before where it's like. Yeah, I probably was gonna win, but like I, I messed up. I, I did I did them wrong, so I said, "Hey, vote me out." So like, and then you feel like you're the man, and in reality, it's like you're just a quitter. But um, makes me question Jelinski's exit. Uh, I, 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 Izzy, I believe that Q was like, "Oh man, this is gonna be hard. Should we stop?" Like I just believe it. I it, see it. He's the type. That like doesn't it's like you know he doesn't want to show he's like so macho so ego driven that like he doesn't want to show that he's tried really 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 hard he didn't try in that poll in the challenge he didn't try at all and he doesn't want to show that he might reach a limit he wants to keep people thinking that he has no limit when really it's like he's scared he's intimidated and he's yeah. just using his like size and the sort of like I don't know like. Yeah, he's like using it to his advantage and people are scared of it, of course, because you're always scared in these games of the loudest voice, right? Like the loudest voice wields some power, enough power to make people scared. And I think enough people are scared. I don't is know. There, is there, I got, I got oh, two ahead, things to say. Sorry to cut you off, right? One, it's like, you know, <laughs> scare me with the size, Q. Scare me. Uh, but two things, right? Because I want to bring it back to Jelinski. Justice for Jelinski. I oh, really that part feel like I am a detective. And mm. my and I work for the Survivor News 
police department. And I am issuing a warrant for Q's arrest. He is a serial killer, right? <laughs> Listen to me. He's a serial killer, but we didn't know. His first victim was Jelinski, and he was like, I don't know. I woke up and Jelinski was dead. And like, we believed it. We was like, oh my God, we got a killer on the loose. And then time and time again, we have seen these killings with the same MO. And it's like, you like, I don't know. He, I got the knife in my hand and he got a stab there. And I don't, he just fell into the knife. And like, again, we have seen it time again. And here with the Tiffany thing, it's like he tried to, he had the knife, but Tiffany dodged. Like, Q is a serial killer, and Jelinski was his first victim, but we didn't have enough evidence. Me, as the detective chief of the Survivor News, I am issuing Q. I am issuing a warrant for okay. you, okay? Somebody come get him because, like, <laughs> we've seen this time and time again, and it's like, wow. But here is the thing, though, right? This episode, in my opinion, right, I've been looking at Q and this, this whole thing, like, what are you doing? This episode, I took a step back, and I was like, one, Q is great. Like, Q is great. If we could get him for the rest of the season, please, because, <laughs> but I don't know. There is weirdly some type of, like, I want to tip my hat off to Q a little bit, right? Because it's like in your crazy chaos is somehow to this point, like you're still here. And my second point is, I know that ain't really make a lot of sense, but last season we had Hannah. We had, who was the other person that quit last season? Sean. Um, I, what I am confused about, and this is why I need Jackery to weigh in, because I think Sean had a, or Hannah wanted to leave because other people wanted to be there before her. And everybody was like, oh, if you quit on Survivor, you're done. You're done. Get, get, uh, whip, uh. Where is that same energy for Q? Because I, I, th that's just, I'm just Double standard. Know. Right. He's loud enough. He's loud enough. He's macho. And I don't know. It, because y'all came for Hannah and y'all came for Sean. Like yes. nobody's business. And I feel like with Sean, they he they voted him out. Like, right. I, I'm right. It's part of Q's plan, Bryce. He was not trying to go home. I guarantee you there will be a confessional on Wednesday about it. That you doesn't know? tell us anything because it's all after the fact. That doesn't tell us but anything. Q, Q was supposed to be on 45, but Q was like, no, put me on 46 because I know Sean and Hannah going to do what they did, and I got to show them how to do the actual plan. Like, yeah. No, no, so I think – I want to know from you. Jay. Again. I think there is some, I don't think it was a, like, I don't necessarily know that it was a plan, but there's some method to the madness where, again, if, if he, like what Hannah did was like, if you guys don't vote me out, I'm quitting when we get back to camp. And what, what I'm sorry. For and what Q, was it was saying? more like, I think I'm the person that, that deserves to be voted out. And he what? said, everybody going to go and I won't be, I won't be there. Yeah. Which is like, I, but that's the thing. I think you're saying that we're giving, I don't think he's a very good player. If you could see at the end and I was on the jury, I would say, you tried to quit. You are not, you're not getting my vote ever. Obviously he's still there. So he's still surviving. So you're not going to give him the flack of like, but yeah, him trying to quit. We'll see if that's like, but we know this is like Q. Q is just delusional. Like, is that's the thing It's like, you can't really blame him. Like, again, he doesn't know what he's doing. I feel like the words that come out of his mouth are just like, they just randomly pop into his head and he says them. And sometimes they're like genius. And sometimes they're like, hey, I want to quit. And then an hour later, he's, he'll be in confessional and be like, my plan to quit <laughs> was all part of my strategy. <laughs> to and like, yeah. And so, again, like, obviously that's not great, but it's very different than Sean and Hannah. Yeah. I, I, I just want to say, like, I, you know, the, dub, the sort of double standard of, like, listen, being the one, like, lady here, you know, like, Second. I feel, I, I do feel like there's Q walks into this game with a certain privilege of, like, who he is, you know, and, like, people look at him, and I think, like, I'm not, like, a huge Venus fan in this game, you know, like, but 
she doesn't get the same sort of, I know she's still here, but people don't like really respect her, I think in the same way that they do Q to a certain extent, but she's like flying by the seat of her pants and like speaking her mind and saying it and walking into and trying to like own her game and be in control of her game. And everyone's like, we hate her, you know? And like every, everyone's scared of Q. And so I, that frustrates me. I think his behavior in the challenge was awful. Him like being all annoyed, like, well, everyone except for one is going to fall off the pole. So like, you can't say that just because people fell like, damn, we should have had rice. You know, it's like, you can't, that's like, you're being hypocritical. I, I think people are annoyed by Q, but them being scared of him, I think could be a legitimate fear that if you cross Q, you might not make it back to the States after the show. Well, ends. right. Or right, not if you voted him out at this tribal, then you don't have to ever be scared of Q ever again. But here's the thing, though. I do want to elaborate on what uh, Izzy is saying, right? And again, this really has nothing to do with Q, but for, and let me know if I'm wrong, but as a gay Black man, mm -hmm. sometimes what I say, people don't take heed to. They don't hear it. They don't respect it. And I feel like similar to Venus, although you might not agree with like what she's saying, it's like when she says something, like... They just don't. But when Q says it right, wrong or indifferent people, there's this respect or like that people tune in and they're like, huh? Let like, you know, for instance, the plus one alliance. It's really not the plus one alliance. It's the Q alliance. Oh, I and thought it was actually the legend 25 alliance. <laughs> <I> was <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> like, I, I think you guys are giving Q too much credit. No, right? but I, it's not Q. I, it's I, not I don't, Q. Yes, I, I, agree. Know what you mean. I, I understand what you mean by like the inherent difference in like the respect that maybe a big guy like Q is going to get versus like a Venus. But I think there are other factors at play. And I also think Q does not get that much respect. I mean, we see Charlie time and time again, basically make fun of him without him even realizing um, we see. And also I think now that I think what we see from Q talking to the confessionals is a lot different than what people have seen throughout. And maybe he's garnered respect from his, like the game he has been playing. But I think now after this tribal his game is completely shot. I think he is going to be on sort of a Venus level, if not lower, where Tiffany, now he blew up her, her idol situation. She's going to confront him. People are going to be like, Q, you try to quit. Like, you're – like, the problem is Q comes in with such a force that you – I feel like a lot, a lot of times you're just going to, like, shake your head and agree. But just because you're doing that doesn't actually mean you respect what he's saying. And I think now that he's acted like this – He's not going to get anyone's respect in the game or but, the respect of the jury. I'm going to have to disagree with you, though, because I feel like Venus comes with a force and people don't shake their head and agree with her. And I'm not saying that I agree with Venus or not, but I'm just saying, like, I just feel like there is a double standard. But I think that it just speaks to society. And again, I'm not, like, condemning Q or anything. I'm just saying, like, I it, it, it's just very interesting. Sure. But uh, I, I get what you're saying. But at the same time, and maybe this was like a more of a snowball effect. But if I come to the merge and like. If I'm a Charlie and Venus's whole tribe, and maybe that's the root issue is Venus's initial tribe. But if her whole tribe is just already discrediting her and she's sort of like a black sheep in the game, then it's a lot easier to 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 dislike to not because then it, strategically saying speaking, it's like even if you start to if you start to work with her, you might be on the outs. And maybe that's that maybe that that in a way speaks to the point that you're making. But I think a lot of other play like. I don't think this is a man. Like I get in the greater. I'm not saying a man. I'm I'm specifically saying if you're asking like this, a heterosexual man as opposed to a female, and to a queer person, to a, a gay queer man. Like we are not. We we can't, they don't hear us the same. And I think this is a prime example because it's like Q don't even be be make a sense, and they're still willing to piece together this plan. It, do you think if Tevin were to say, "Vote me out." Do you think I, I Tevin would no not would have been fighting for Tevin. right? Well, I mean, Tevin, not I, I don't know. I mean, like, I, let's just right. like reverse it. Like, I just think like if Tevin had pulled that at tribal, I if think it was a, if it was a time where obviously this tribal he was the vote, so I think people would have obliged. Well, I mean, he, he was if he, 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 he did that a couple was, episodes ago. <laughs> I like, I think even this time, Hunter would fight for him to stay. I think other people would fight for him. Hunter to stay. wasn't fighting for nothing. Hunter was funny the whole episode to keep Tevin safe. He went to he literally walked up to the groups before. Yeah, but, but, but that, that was something. another thing that confused me. He walked up to who? Like, okay, mind you, y'all. I love. Yeah, again, I, I want to say I agree with your point about like in the greater scheme, but I think this Q Venus comparison is really bad because they're uh, both. I think they're both awful players. So it's like, uh, how do you? 
like what there's no baseline of like excuse me but i think there are things you can tie them together like okay bad players that's one thing they have in common another thing is like they're pretty like they're individually confident you know what i mean like they both have their own they bring they're really playing their own game to the game and i think they're outspoken and say whatever they like i think i i think in those ways they sort of act in the same kind of chaotic way like they would feel the same kind of chaotic piece on the chessboard in some ways but of course they're different because of the outside societal things that they bring to the game which all of us bring to the game i mean i felt that so hard on my season was just like feeling the otherness that was just Mm -hmm. never it was like talking to a brick wall sometimes it was like just not not hitting and then other people seemingly with like less coherent, less sort of like, I don't know, strategic thinking or social thinking it, immediately. Of course, of course, of course. But that's that. why I, like, you know, like, like I don't get it. So that's yeah. more my issue. Like, if, in for your your guy, like, I feel like in the defense of your argument, I feel like yeah. using this as the example is actually a bad example to, to use because I agree with your point overall. Yeah. But I think Q A now that he's behaved in this way, his game is actually shot. I don't think people are going to respect him going forward. And then Venus also, like, yes, yeah, she's a smaller woman, but the way that she we've seen that she just approaches people is also really not good. So it's but like you're not saying that that's the same way Q approaches people. Q approaches people, and I'm like, oh my god, like I clutch my pearl. You know, I think they come anyway. We don't have to keep harping on the Venus. We can thing i just um but no i hear your point and here's another thing like again but I, we love jack and jack I, like we respect oh, yeah. point, but i just sometimes i think there is a lived experience that maybe izzy can I, that i just feel like i understand what, what you're saying but i just have to say and again i just feel like it's hard to quantify and it's hard to like you know for other people to see but it exists and i think that this i think the venus and q are a great example and i don't think that ne- they're necessarily horrible players i just think you know in this game of a lot of different personalities and a lot of different people it's just hard for them to play their game that they want to play how they want to play it when they want to play it and who they want to play it with and how, like you know i think that that ultimately is some of their downfalls is that like they want to play how they want to play with who they want to play with and how like it it can't go your way like you got to be open and flexible you know yeah. you got to be versatile and, and i do want to clarify before we move forward i agree with your argument that like certain people of certain demographics are going to gain kind of an inherent more respect to what they say i want to i want to <laughs> like i don't want my my pushback on this to be considered as like disagreeing with that i agree with that wholeheartedly but that's why my argument is just that this example, I think they're both a mess. And so that's why I think if you wanted to investigate it more um, thoroughly and like responsibly, I think you would take maybe two good players and maybe one is like a heterosexual white man and one is like a gay woman of color. And they're both really good players, but maybe that that white man is getting more credit. And we've seen that in the past, even with like, have you seen season, season 13 of Big Brother? <laughs> Yeah, I'm, a, I'm agreeing. I think that I think that that happens. I think that that yeah. happens, and that's why I'm agreeing. But that's that's the better example to to analyze that because there's fewer like extraneous factors like their messy ass gameplay. Like, but, I do, but I do think like especially on this season, I would say like messy gameplay or just messy in whatever way you want to put it is actually like the majority of like of people and like what's happening on the beach, and so you can't discredit that. Also, as a as an element, uh, as a move in these games to be messy or chaotic, you know, can be for good. So I, I, I just think like also ultimately like whether people are good or bad at this, like, yes, it is mostly subjective, right? Cause it's all situational. It's all sure. like a lot of it is luck. Like imagine if Q was on season 45, right? Like all of that changes the dynamic of everything. One person can change the dynamic of everything. So um, that the element of luck in terms of like, who you're connecting with, who you're cast with, who you're playing, you know, what tribe you start on, all of that is, yeah, even if the tribes started in different configurations, I think we would see a very different merge also. Oh, 100%. 100%. I have a question. If we are a tribe and I don't like Wendell and I want Wendell to 
get voted out. And in my confessionals, I say I want Wendell to get voted out. Uh, but Izzy galvanizes Jack and says, Jack, we need to get Wendell out. Jack, Izzy, oh, I know where you me, know <laughs> and they say they want to get Wendell out. And I'm like, yes, I've been wanting to get them out too. And we get Wendell out. Whose move is that? Whose move is it? I'll be Izzy's move, I think. Well, okay. I let me say I think about this a lot <laughs> because I think about like um the fact that like you need people in this game. Like, right? I think it's true that like you need other people. I need if I was gonna make that move, I need Bryce already questioning Wendell. Like, I need that to happen. That's like uh, part of it. You don't know who's gonna be sitting in the final three. So I think once you get to three who can claim certain things starts to become really clear. Cause if I'm not there, I think Bryce probably can claim a lot of it. Giving me credit would give you my jury vote for sure. But like, you know, I think I was kind of annoyed by in seemingly the pettiness of already trying to have a need of like claiming the move because like, it's all just about how you contextualize your argument and your mission statement at final tribal, you know? And so I actually thought I was like annoyed I'm like annoyed at the editing of like, we have so much time for editing and it's all just like, not really strategic stuff ultimately, you know? I thought That's it was a really interesting is. bit of editing because I, I think it's very rare that we see these like open debates over like whose move is who, right? And that's such a part of Survivor that it's never that clear. And so I feel like this was a nice example where we have Venus, we have Tevin, we have Liz, all sort of grappling over this idea of like who is the the person that voted out soda so i was i, I don't know maybe i'm misinterpreting what you said but i was happy to see that debate and i and i think, you think that debate on tevin's part maybe pushed liz over the edge and well, like, he's not trying to be like oh it was me can you believe it was me can you believe she's saying that it was me and liz is like i hate this guy like he's gonna run this whole thing i gotta get rid of you know like no, that's and absolutely true I, I think, just want, yeah 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 and so that speaks to me Again, y'all know I love Tevin. Tevin is, Me shout too. out to Tevin. I think he's amazing. I, I truly crawled so that a Tevin could fly, right? Yes. But ultimately <laughs> what it came down in Tevin's game, in my opinion, is the one quintessential rule in Survivor, when you get comfortable. And I think that Tevin, with everything that everyone has said about him, he's charismatic, he's funny, he's in the know. I think that because he was in that plus one alliance, because he had Hunter, he just assumed certain things. And I think that if it would have been kept a little tighter to the chest about like his outburst about Venus. Like, <laughs> what is she talking about? Like, I really felt like that's a conversation that you should have specifically and only with Hunter because what you don't realize because you are so comfortable and you think that everyone is like, with you outside of Venus, like you've alienated a Liz who now like Liz might not have much uh, agency in the game, but that little gripe that she now has with you. And so I think that that's where Tevin messed up in the sense that like he just got so comfortable and felt as though everyone was on his side when really it's like, only one person could win. And I think that that's really where Tevin kind of his one flaw in the game was. Yeah, that was an opportunity to pull Liz closer and say like, hey, this was this was our move. Like we we did this together. And and I do think I agree him saying like to Liz, uh, she's taking credit for my move. If I'm Liz, even though like the question you posed, Bryce, I don't really think it was Liz's move. Just because you want someone out for a long time, if you're not the one to pull the numbers together, it's not really your move. It, it, it's a move that works for you, but, which is a very important part of the game because not every move needs to be your move. But so what Izzy said, though, it don't really matter. If you get to the end, every, but this is where you need to have the Q mentality. And every move is your move. And so it's like, well, I, I received that. So Well, not every move, but I'm just saying, like, I, I receive what you're saying, Izzy, so much because it's like, it's almost like take your ego out of it. Like, let, yeah. if we're working together as a group, if we all put in 50 cent, 50 cent, 50 cent, 50 cent, and we got $2 and we get an ice cream, you know the ice cream is eventually going to melt. And so, like, you know. I was like, where's this going? He got himself trapped. I, 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 no ice cream. <laughs> but it, but it's, if it's a car, we all can utilize the car, and we might kick Ooh. somebody out. But you know what I'm saying? Like, it, I, yeah, I received that so much. I have something to say about that, actually, also, Bryce. I'll, this is a po I'll pose a question to this oh. squad. Is like, 
if you're on the jury and you're hearing, you know, Bryce is sitting there, final tribal, and we're talking about this, and maybe I was involved in the Wendell vote, Bryce was involved, Jack was involved in the Wendell vote. Like, as a jury, wouldn't you want the person to be like, yeah, I agreed with that plan. I wanted that plan. I had been thinking about it before, and I took the bait. Izzy initiated it, and I helped get those numbers. Like, including people mm. on the jury in things that have happened, I that would make me as a jury member be like, yeah. yep, yep, that's my guy. That's my guy. You know, because it's like you have to find ways of giving – you can't just, like, be like, all of these stuff, and I'm sitting here – and this is why I was, be- it's like, no, this was collaborative and all of these yeah. things helped you because now you're sitting six, not nine. And like, this helped me because I'm sitting here and that's why I should win because that also shows that I played a social game and I listened to Bryce, you know, like, and all these things. And I, I, oh, Q is just missing that. Like, I don't know if we, can, if we can get back to this, like plus one alliance, but it's like, Q, do you not see that you live on hypocrisy Hill? Like, like you're mad that people are mentioning names and then you're just like, but if you go against the six and meanwhile, you're naming people, where's Tim? Where's, you know, like, where's Tim? Where's Tiff? You know, like what happened to Tiffany? Like what's going on? Right. That's not real. Yeah. Like, what do you think? like why would Tim anyone? Went think that? Tim went against the six first. It's true. Well, Tim, Tim he, the six well, first. didn't do anything right when he got to the merge. Like, <laughs> poor Tim. But like, well, that, well, so I want to backtrack to what you were just saying yeah, about yeah. like, I, I yeah. think that is also such a good debate that we're seeing of like the jury man, like for Liz, right? Like kind of like you said, Bryce, it, you might all be in the same car, but if Liz is the one who's driving it at the end, how do you express your role in that car along the way? And so here's where you're like, it, it, there's such a balance, Izzy, that I think you highlighted of, you you want to give credit you, you don't want to be like this was my move this was my move because then people on the jury are gonna be like that was like kind of my move that's that's weird that you take credit for it but at the same time you also can't be like yet yeah, this was all this was all tevin and i kind of just agreed with it and thought hey yeah, I want that's to not what i'm saying oh, you no, know? i'm not saying, you, I'm not saying <laughs> that i'm just saying for a player it's a hard balance because it's like so liz needs to take some credit but for tevin and, and, and even a venus maybe she ends up on the jury it's like, what, like, how do you, you're like, okay, I worked with them to do this. What it's like for Liz, how do you take a little bit of credit in the most healthy way possible? Is it sort of like, Hey, I was wanting soda out. I knew at the time I didn't have that agency like Tevin did. So I tried to like maybe plant some seeds for Tevin and push that narrative a little bit. Maybe that's the answer, but it is, I, I don't know the answer. It is a very interesting line that we haven't really seen shown at least this early in the game of like, okay, you can't take all the credit. But you can't like give too much credit to us. Taking credit I, already in some ways. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> but I I I disagree with you a little bit, Jack. And I think Izzy, you hit the head on the nail, uh, or whatever. Oh, nail on the head. Okay. I know you don't know how I do it, but like that was close <laughs> enough. <laughs> oh, that's why I love Izzy. But <laughs> here's the thing, right? Like I think, like you're right. If you're sitting there at the jury, if you're sitting there speaking to the jury, what better way to get a Liz on your side and to say it's my vote? Or if you just say like, Liz, I went with I went with Liz's plan to get off Venus. It She swayed me, like bring them along on the journey. And again, sometimes here I go again, talking about a James Jones, because every episode I got to bring up a James Jones. But James Jones says this a lot where it's like he always says at the end. It's storytelling. Yes. And it's not really like what you did. If you can captivate the jury, name drop, do what Tim did. My mama, my auntie, my grandma, my aunt, my, you know what I mean? Like name drop all of these people in your story of how you yeah. were able to. Well, but, okay. Can I, can I, can I, yes. can I, expand I'm loving this episode. Right? Yes. Can I expand on this, Bryce, a little mm. bit? Cause Please. I think it's like, I'm, I, I miss seeing people sort of have like their mission statement of how they're going to play the game. And that doesn't mean that that doesn't come with flexibility and like floating around. But it's like, if you can sit at tribal, it's not about like, here are my five moves. It's like, this was ultimately my assessing who I'm playing the game with and where the relationships are. This was going to be my role. And based on that role, this move made sense and that move made sense. And it was all connecting back to my thesis statement, right? It's like you're writing an essay at the end. And if all of your arguments don't support why the way that you played the game, whether it was passive or in control or a comp beast, like if all your moves don't connect to that, then it's like willy nilly. And it's just like, 
I don't know, becomes less meaningful. It becomes less narrative. It becomes less of a journey. And I think we're seeing at tribal, especially in this new era, we're looking for journeys at the end, you know? So I think I just like so much time was spent on this one goddamn thing that ultimately then became Q's vote. <laughs> like he kind of stole the thunder from everyone. Like no one's getting this, no one's getting credit for this other than Q maybe, <laughs> you know, like, um, and so, yeah, I was like, yeah, Q. Yeah. <laughs> I also love when everything is happening uh, and then Kit Tiffany goes to Q and she's like, what, 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 what are you doing? He's like, they was mentioning your name. I, he said, <laughs> <laughs> like, and so he like, I was trying to take the heat off of you. Uh, and by they, <laughs> you mean, <laughs> I was like, but again, he didn't lie though. That's what I say. Q didn't lie. Tiffany's like, what you doing? They was mentioning your name. You mentioned her name first. <laughs> But that that's the that's the cueism. Like I think like I, he spin. never he, trust people that speak in riddles, <laughs> you know. Like he's one of those that like semi speaks in riddles, like you could read between the lines, you know, like <laughs> and yeah. So I got a question for you guys. How far can Q make it? I was over not until yesterday. You know? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Now now how far can Q make it? I would venture to say he's not the next target up on anybody's list. Mm, yeah, I, there's a world where I could see that they target Tiffany before they target him because That's of that darn idol. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Tiffany, and, I, I, yeah. I worry that he could slide into that slot where it's like you become chaotic enough that people are convinced you're never going to win, and then you some might slip into the goat position, but actually you're still want to be in control. Like I could see a scary path for Q to the end in some ways. <laughs> you know, also yeah. Q like y'all want to bring around goats. <laughs> but it's like you're out. scared of someone that said Aubrey was their favorite player. I love Aubrey. She was Rob, Rob Queen. But like you're scared of the person that said Aubrey right. was your favorite player. But he was like, and you don't bring y'all well, bring scared. Oh, he's scared. Y'all bring it around. Oh. Uh, <laughs> sorry, but Q, Q was. Uh, no, Q, 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 Q scared everything. Like he was. If you if you hide well and hide and see, he uh, big mistake. Right. That was now, ridiculous. let's that talk was about that, though, yeah, right? Because also, I, shout out to Issa Look, the revolutionary way of a young creator has taken hold of how they predict people's future in the game. I thought Q's commentary and Venus's commentary on people playing the game, I thought was excellent, honestly. And although <clears throat> I love Hunter, listen, I am a I am a dove in a cage waiting for Hunter to let me fly free. Like, okay, I love Hunter, right? But I really do feel like specifically with Hunter and seeing where he hid, right? Yeah. I almost feel like because Hunter has practiced so much to be on this game of Survivor, uh, I almost feel like Hunter feels like he's in assimilation and not the actual game of Survivor, right? Because it's like, he's almost like so equipped, so great for it. But we see in this vote, he kind of sort of was left out. Then he said he was going to like cause a go <coughs> cause a ruckus. And like, he, he just cute. walks off with cute. Like, I don't know. I just feel like I am yeah. worried for Hunter. I think that he is so equipped. I think that he can win the game. I just, I, he has everything to win the game, but I feel like, he might be getting a little His lost. Definitely. Do you think he understands strategy? Like, do you think he like like if he was like if he was left in charge? Like, let's just say you know, like let's say if like people were sort of giving him the leadership role. Do you think he would really be? Yes, I think he understands strategy. I think he's equipped and like yes, he can climb a tree. Yes, we've seen you know. Yes, he can win a comp. You know that doesn't impress me that much. You know. <laughs> So I, like, I think he navigated the pre-merge with a lot of like strategic. The strategic they won. No, like, like when he had Kevin, people start talking, and he like had Tegan and Soda, like he had a crew. Yeah, yeah. and well, also now well, Soda's gone, and now Kevin's gone. Kevin gone. So how good is Hunter? You know, I'm just, well, you yeah. know, that's all. I just well, yeah, when this, Kevin this, started targeting this, Soda, he understood that that would open up his relationship with Tevin more and 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 things like that. I, I I think I think he's fine. Again, I think this episode drops his stock a lot, but I don't think he's like a dumb like just a copy. Oh. I think he has some chops, but. I, yes. I think when he is the when the pressure is on for him to like make a big play, like it was to save Tevin, it wasn't his moment. And then I agree with you, Bryce. 
as ridiculous as the hide and seek was, there was some truth to like, if someone's going to go this hard for hide and seek, they're going to go really hard for a million dollars. And it's, it kind of is the same in the challenge when he hangs upside down at the end. It's like, you don't need to be doing all that. You yeah. know? No, but you can. You can. How much do you want to bet he was in his basement off the banister practicing for that? Like, I'm going to show Jeff that I can. Yeah. Well, yeah, and that's great. And he won immunity. And we had a messy tribal. And his closest ally went home. Oh, you yeah. No, he's, is he, his, his stock went down a lot. I don't think he has a good chance to win at all. <laughs> but but I, I just had to push back on you saying that he – has no strategic chops because I think yeah. he does. Well, I don't think we've seen, like, I, I feel like we haven't seen it yet. Like it's like the image that I'm getting from like how they're portraying Hunter is like, I'm not sure if that element is there. That's yeah, all. Gonna, gonna, you're probably I mean, right. He's not going to like guide any big plays. I feel like, I mean, but like, he, this is an opportunity. We, he could have played an idol for Tevin too. That was, but he could have, he could have, but also it's like, we know that, uh, Hunter's game, he's been downplaying it. Like, he has said that to us. And again, that's why I'm saying. It's like, I feel like he is playing so hard in the simulation that he is forgetting that, like, baby boy, you, I need to see you in action. However, with all of these big personalities arising, I think that Hunter is actually in a really good spot because these big personalities that of the... Q of the Tevins of the Tiffany's of the uh, who else is there like of the the Charlies like I feel I mean, like there Venus, are a lot of people yeah. and Venus that like people are going to want to go after them and with Hunter just in a tree chilling like I think that yeah. like when the time for him to emerge down uh I think that he is still in a position to be good but I just need for him to yeah. just come down off the tree a little bit for sure. this point, we got like three days left, right? So when's he gonna do it? Like, <laughs> <laughs> leave my hunter alone. No, I think he. I think now losing Tevin, he's not gonna be at the top of anyone's radar for a minute. And he is very good in these challenges. He could go on a run, but I agree. I, I do agree ultimately with Izzy. Like, he is gonna have to step up strategically, yeah. and that's yeah. gonna be the question of like, I think he has it in him, but is he gonna be able to take? Because we saw him try to maneuver this plan to save Tevin. And it wasn't the cleanest attempt. So um, that so that's sort of where I'm at with him. And I would say he's cool with Q. And now Q is kind of all over the place, too. So it, it really – Hunter's going to need to be able to bounce back for sure. Hunter's got to be Tiff and Kenzie's new, like, you know, like comp beast guy. You know, like replace Q with Hunter. <laughs> yeah. You know. Anyway. Yeah. I, so, uh, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, we've, we've covered a lot of the chaos of the episode. I do want to talk about the challenge a little bit. And we have this, this rice negotiation where the Which first, wasn't a negotiation. <laughs> it's the first time in the new era where they do not come to an agreement. And, and Jeff said, hard, set, set it hard. You need four people to sit out or you could have two people sit out and they lose their votes. And Q and Liz were willing to sit out. Seemed like nobody was really willing to give up their vote. Of course. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm glad you said Yeah, the, I hate the like taking away of the vote. The vote is like the only currency you have. And if you, if people are not yeah. voting, it's like, what is this game? Who cares? It's like, old, you know, it's like decided by luck. Anyway, yeah, I hate yeah. the dangling, the taking away the vote. But what do we think about, I mean. Jeff uh, had to give them something. Right. I loved Q where Charlie was like, all right, if somebody else is willing to step up with me, I'll step up. And here go Q. You don't need nobody to step up. Just come to the front. And then listen, if Jeff say no, we'll all come to the back. But it's like, I love, like, but no, because you're like, no, <laughs> but it kind of sort of made sense though. Uh, and Charlie almost fell for it. I just, I thought that it was just so interesting. I mean, I just think once again, Q's behavior before and after the, ch during the challenge, the whole challenge was just like, if that was anyone else that acted like that, they, they would have gone tonight, no matter what happened to Tribal. I also think it's funny that I think that Q knew that this was not his challenge. So it's like, let me, let me, let me get people to sit down so that we can get some rice. But I, I guess, and I don't know, Wendell, you've played, the most games out of all of us. Um, being in the game this far, being this famished, how important is a little bit of rice on your belly? That's a lot. When you were at Exile Island, like what, like how would what would that have done for you? Do you it think it would have been able? It Do helps a think? lot. Okay. We you think <laughs> the answer is yes, but go ahead and ask the question. The answer Do is you yes. Think if you had rice, you would have been able to beat Natalie. 
in that challenge? Damn, Bryce. <laughs> so I already answered that question, but in Ghost <laughs> Island, I'll tell you what, when we negotiated for Rice and they took our whole shelter in like the towards the end of the season, that Rice helped us out a lot. And he, it, we had plenty of rice for the rest of the season. We we can eat as much rice as we wanted. And um, your boy won the game with some rice. Thank you, Bryce. I was right there cheering for you. I will say shorter game, though. I don't know. Do you think the shorter game affects that, Wendell? Like, to, you know, like, I don't know. I'm just curious because. Yeah, with a shorter game, I still, like, they're still out there starving for however long. Yeah. How long have you been out there? Like eight days now? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They've been there for like a day and a half. They got some rewards too that sprinkled in. You get some food. I mean, obviously it would be great to have rice. I don't know personally if I would ever – the only time I would ever sit out is like if it's a challenge that I know for a fact I'm not going to win. Um, but, again, I'm not going to take Q's position and like knock people who want to compete. And also I would never, ever give up my vote for some rice. Um, but I thought they were going to be like, I thought Jeff was maybe going to say, okay, Q and Liz are two people standing here. We can take, you know, like, did he, did he, I can't remember if he said like, okay, you two could lose your vote and we could be done right now. I think they like brought it up. And they were okay. like, I don't know if he, but it was, they, they stepped up not under the assumption of like losing the vote. It was more like, right. You know, okay. you know, now if it's four people to, to get some rice. How many people need to sit out for them to win some Bryce? Oh. <laughs> Is that – you think Q would sit out for some Bryce? I, I, I would hope Hunter – I, I would hope Hunter would. Uh, <laughs> and then I thought it was so funny at the end, Charlie, right before he drops, he's like, Jeff, I got you right where I want you. <laughs> Two bags of rice. Char Charlie is so funny. He's definitely he's my favorite. Uh, Damn, I'm a downer on this season. <laughs> I'm like, stop talking about Taylor Swift. I don't care. <laughs> I love it. I a question for the group. Uh at next tribal, if Tiffany is not if she doesn't win immunity, does she need to play her idol or should she try to risk it to live another day? I think a lot I, I don't know because obviously the fallout of this trial yeah. would be crazy. Who knows who's gonna be the target? But what I will say is I feel like especially in the new era, when someone's idol actually becomes like common knowledge it actually takes a target off of them in a sense because everyone is now worried that they could play an idol. And so they just sort of don't shift the target onto them. I think that's happened a few times. I mean, yeah, yeah. it happened with Austin. It happened with Xander. Uh, it could happen. It, it's happened with some other people too. I'm just thinking about my U Chicago homies, but um, it, there, it is like you, if, if you like someone well enough and they have an idol and they know that everyone knows that they have an idol, so they might play it. It's sort of like, how do you ever hatch that plan with the numbers being this size to, to really pull off a blind side? It could be very difficult. So I think Tiffany will be able to get her feet back under her and be okay. If Q wins immunity next episode, which is a, a huge chance, where do you think who's getting votes? Um, I mean, he seemed to be. It seems like anyone is fair game to him. Sure. So, like, I like, I like. I'm having trouble. Like, usually, I like like questions like that. I like because it's like you you know how you learn how people think or react. What the hell is Q gonna do? Like, anyone at any point can become the target. Maybe like a. I think a Liz could get votes soon because she sort of arrived last episode, but it doesn't seem like she actually has that many close allies. But now she's just organized this move to take out Tevin. And in the new era, especially, we see a lot of like, okay, you're the person who steps up and makes a move. Now you're the new target and you get cut off. And so I think it could be a Liz or it could be like a Ben because Ben is very social and, but he's not really tied yeah, in. Talking ben about ben. Yeah. And, and Ben, you know, he hid well in hide and seek. He did. So, you know, I mean, if you could hide well in hide, hide and seek, you could hide well in this game. So how did that? How does that equate? Like, I was just sitting there being like, how does that equate? Like, I've put enough leaves over my body, which means I'm going to be the ultimate deceiver. You know, it's just like, ah, the logic is insane. But the me. thing is, I, I didn't directly agree, disagree with anything that Venus or uh, or Q concluded from the right. game. I think there's some truth to it, but it is insane for Q like, the, to be like, you, you put leaves over you. Big mistake. That's a mistake. <laughs> right. It, it was right. <laughs> the funniest thing about Q is that everybody in his eyes is um is a is an F up. And so if everyone's making so many mistakes and he's like, 
target, 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 target. That's what I'm saying. Like, and nobody's really a target because everyone is just a screw up. And, and but it's also how he's saying that. Yo, Jack, <laughs> you know, you didn't mess that. He said, That's a mistake. He said, but Jack right. on a blue shirt. No. Cancel Christmas. <laughs> cancel Christmas. Right. Not, oh, you're not cancel Christmas. But here is another thing, right? Hot take. I the way that Q is willing to turn on his alliance, hear me out. I think that some people could take notes on, right? I do feel like sometimes in this new era, especially I think of like James Jones's season, where it's like people like you're just going with the status quo. I'm not mad at some of the outlandish or like the way that Q is so easily like, hey, I, I could turn on. Like, I'm not mad at that. I do think that there is something good about that and that like players can utilize that where it's like, it's not just we're taking out the numbers. Like we kind of like, feel where people are at so it's like i'm not mad at the way q kind of just jump ship from person to person to person uh i think that that can be but, helpful well and i think to your point about going back and not to dive too much in, about why people are giving q so much respect and i think a lot of that is a, a, a facade a, a mask well, agency i would say yeah yeah that's I, a better for, for me i think that q has actually shown to be a very very loyal player until you give him any reason to, to think that you were not loyal. And but, so, like, but, for, uh, someone uh, like, for someone like a Charlie who's just been brought in, even though you know that everything Q is saying is ridiculous, I think the best thing you could do is just nod your head yes, agree, and make him feel good. Because you see that Q, if someone happens to bring up something that goes against Q's plan at all, that's when he turns on you full force, like he did with, did with Tiffany, which is not good gameplay necessarily. But for me, if I'm out there, I'm like, okay, Q is just a loose cannon, but if he thinks that I'm with him, he will be loyal. And so I you, have to show it. you just have to fake it to him and be like, Q, I'm with you, and then just let that ride. But, but it doesn't mean you respect what he's saying. It's just like, how do you win Q over? But what if you lie to him and say Charlie name and Charlie name say nothing? Like that. That's the problem with it, though. Blood him how? Like, say if Wendell says to to Q that you said something, you and Q are locked in. You didn't say nothing, but like Wendell just says, "Well, you know, Jack said your name." Well, it's like fair, cancel Christmas. Fair, when, when Kevin went to Q, Q does have weird strokes of sanity. It like when Q when Kevin went to Q to be like, "Hey, Tiffany is a little bit suspect about like she wants to keep Venus around." Q then goes to Tiffany and says. Who do who do you have your eyes on? And then she throws out Maria Tim. So, Tim but then that was a test. Like he didn't actually have a conversation with him. He was like, "Oh, she said Maria. I'm not even going to engage in asking why or being like, I don't." I'm not know. saying that it's it's necessarily a good move, but he did yeah. go do his research with Tiffany to see, hey, is she going to throw out someone in the six? Also. When you are just, when you just can't test people, like you yeah. just can't be out here. Like Izzy, what time is it? Right. Izzy, what time is it? I have no idea. We're on a beach. That's a mistake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What time are we leaving for Chicago? Uh, as soon as the airplane allows us. That's a mistake. Yeah. Jack, who name a perfume? Dior. That's a mistake. Like for me, it's like if you're just constantly testing your alliance. Where's the conversation? Exactly. Because in the end, we see Tiffany go to him. And if she's really against you, she's saying, hey, you should probably write Tevin's name down. Because if they see you not writing his name down, they're like, so it's like. But, okay, here, here's the thing. I'm with you. I don't think your so strategy much is good. I'm just saying, like, him turning on Tiffany is such a bad idea. But. I'm the re I'm going back to the reason as to why people are appease him so much is because you see how volatile he is, but and that, if, if you think that he is, if but we have seen that if he thinks you are loyal to him and his plan of the six, then he's not going to turn on you until he has a reason. Oh, to right? Yeah. Yeah. Wait. Okay. I want to ask this question to Wendell right now because it's pertinent. I feel like after all this, like I get what you're saying. It was the same on Big Brother. Like you sit for the live episode and everyone knows what they're voting. Like the goodbye, you know, like your last speech means nothing, right? Everyone knows what they're voting. But if you were sitting at that tribal, mm -hmm. would that be a type of tribal that would? Like, would you- Are you think, in? 
Yeah, like if if you were going into that tribal and you're like, okay, yeah, I'm in on the Tevin plan. Q does his thing. You've been feeling weird with you because I think everyone's got their weird, you know, thing sensing his volatility, his like all of this. Would that be a type of tribal that would change your mind? Like, because you were saying like, nah, people go and like, that's why Tevin ultimately went. But I'm curious, like, that seemed wild that things didn't change after that. I think a Q is tied into so many people's plans right now, at least short term plans. I think if we think about last season, who did it? Sean did it um, when he like, was like, vote for me. And I think D was like, I'm going to still vote the way I wanted to vote. Like, you could want to go home, but my plans are. But I, I'm not saying like about honoring his wishes. I don't give a fuck about his wishes. Okay. But I mean, like, in the terms of like, do you think it, like, you really, y'all really don't think it would, it benefits everyone else on the tribe for them to have voted Q out last night? What what I'm saying is this, like, no matter yeah. what, if I'm sitting there, I think a Tevin is more of a threat than, than Q. Le Hold on, Bryce. Hold I on. agree. I agree with you. In in my game, and I've said this every week now, I played with a Q type of a character in Chris Noble. And <laughs> I knew you were out. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, of course, he was going to bring Chris. Sorry, Izzy. They've been eating him up in the comments. Not <laughs> Chris <laughs> Noble. I say no. Every no. episode, he bring no. him up. This is, a, this is the kind of person that if you don't cut off his momentum, He's going to get as far as Q got and have all of these things and all these people attached to him. In our case, we were trying to get this guy for a long time, and we finally got him at the merge. But at the merge, he corralled everyone except for Dom and myself and almost had them vote for us. Like, these players, they're so – they're, like, they're, they're dominant players as far as, like, they can talk to you and just, like, you kind of just, like, want to be like, all right, bud, and – in in this case with Q, I think I think we're at a point now where people are like, all right, Q is kind of a, a little kooky a little bit, but he's part of my plan right now. He's not threatening my plan. And okay, he wants to go home right now. And if you ask me, I think he wanted to go home to kind of do something noble because he understood that he messed up a lot of his allies' games. But at that point, if I'm if if he was part of my plan, I'm like, nah, bro, you're just doing a little kooky thing right now. We're going to sleep on this and we're going to reconvene. So yeah, I'm, well, I don't know if after that, like I could ever feel like he was a part of my thing. Yeah, you can't feel like, you, really, is, you know, yeah, yeah, you can't feel like you can really trust him, whatever. But I'd rather get this more imminent threat out right now and worry about a cue later. Okay. Yes. I, yeah. It's just. Well, I think we think. I, I think we really see it differently because, yeah, yeah. which is yeah. okay. It's just wild because I don't see Tevin corralling anyone. The fact that Q can corral people to me is more of an imminent threat than Tevin. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I get what you're saying for sure. But now Tevin. I feel like Q has kind of tanked his game. So you get out Tevin, who actually has hasn't like win win potential mm -hmm. now it's like q as well maybe and maybe there's a reason to cut him out because he's so chaotic but it's like you cut out tevin who could win but you keep a q who like probably can't win and maybe if you, he's kind of on your side then that gives you more options going forward yeah. but question. Q's tony good. what you say when i said but q is tony <laughs> everything is intentional and he's gonna win that is true damn who's who will take credit for Tevin going home? Venus Literally no is. one. <laughs> no one deserves credit. <laughs> you. But, well, Q, you. but you know, in true, but here's the thing though. This is also why y'all can say whatever y'all want to say about Venus's game, but her arc. In she racking season, up things her on her arc team. in this season eats down. Like for her to be at the back of her tribe, them not really wanting to work with her, for her to be on the merge and to say that, boom, boom, she cuts out two people. Like, I just feel like oh. Venus is going to come back to that trap. <laughs> Venus is going to come back and she's going to be on top of the world. Like, y'all ain't going to be able to, like, I just feel like Venus is going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> what y'all want to do now? Who who should we like? I don't know. I just feel like, but there's something that I admire about her her cockiness, her like grittiness, and y'all can say whatever y'all want to say about her gameplay. But I'm just speaking as like a gay that wants to love a 
a, a legendary queen out here. It's like, I want to give it to Venus because she is just, the way that Venus went up to Tevin and was like, hey, we ain't really been working together, but like, you try to get on the money team or not? Like, you you try to get on the win it? Like, just the way when that she, she when she gave him advice was hilarious. The advice, <laughs> you, like, you don't really understand this the the strategic component of this game, Tevin. But I but, can teach you, <laughs> right? Like, come come with mother. Let like, but there's just something about that. Like, again, I people get bogged down in the 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 strategic of it all. But for me. I mean, she's, I so, she's so fun like uh, yeah i don't I, I think her gameplay is really messy but i actually like this episode her ability to just be like someone comes to her with a plan and she's like okay that that works for me i'm down and then like leave it there and like that was a good episode for venus uh as much as i knock her gameplay overall she does have good strategic instincts and she is really a force of driving entertainment so she is a great presence on the season like no doubt for, for, for i me. empathize with her i feel i like really felt um, for her pre-merge when it just felt at least, you know, I'm curious to know what really it was like on the beach, but like from what we saw, it felt very much like she was just begging people to engage with her and they just weren't, which to me is bad survivor on their part. You know what I mean? Like how dare you not just be right. at least cordial or have conversations with people, even if ultimately it's a bullshit conversation or you don't, want to work with them like that's fine they shouldn't know that right i mean so i i do feel like venus is like coming into her like perfect like resurrected like villain era where she's like i don't give a fuck y'all yes, yes. don't give a fuck about me and so guess what i don't like that you're talking over there and i'm gonna walk there because there's no rules so like i'm gonna stand right here you know like <laughs> i really feel like uh yeah. venus is in her when miley cyrus turned black for like that era and like you know i feel like that's where venus is right now and like you Joe like Joe what wishes she okay was. Like, <laughs> uh, like right but was wrecking ball not a jam okay like did miley yes. like I'm, I'm just saying like i i receive it also uh on another level right i do feel like i can confidently say after these episodes, right? Like, uh, Charlie and Dr. Maria, like, <laughs> I'm still like, I still have Kenzie as my winner pick. However, after this episode and seeing Dr. Maria and Charlie and just like the episode or just the scenes where they were kind of like discussing things and like how they should move forward and different stuff, it just really got me seeing Dr. Maria like, She's moving like a winner. Charlie has always been moving like a winner, in my opinion. And so it's like, it's really kind of like the big three. But I, I do feel like that conversation that they had was the most um, tangible sort of long-term, like real, they were working together. Like they, you can feel that they actually are allies, that they, that they are partners in this. And that I love to see. Like that, I feel like that element... I feel like I'm, you know, like missing from this season or something, you know, <laughs> like a little bit, you know. They were crisis managing, right? And again, like managing the crisis, but long term, not yeah. just dealing with the crisis in in itself. And so yeah. I, uh, I enjoy seeing that. Yeah, same. What? Anything else you got, Jack? No, nah, just just taking it all in. I was a, it was a wild episode. Is like so, there's so much going on in my mind, but I think we covered everything pretty well and. I'm really excited to see where things move from here because things are for sure ramping up. All right, so I do have another question. Oh, no. So, Jack, I think earlier in the episode, you, you said something about Q's game, like he doesn't really know what he's doing. He's so chaotic and this and that. Should there be a justice for Bandu hashtag? Oh, uh, in what in what sense? I'm just saying, like, if all of the 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 adjectives that you used to describe Q's game plan, I felt like were a lot of adjectives that people had for Banu. Like, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's out here. Like, you know, y'all say, oh, Banu just spilled the beans. Q spilled the beans about his closest ally this episode. Q going back and forth. I don't know. Like, it, it... Well, I think, I think obviously, you know, Q, his whole plan when he was coaching Banu was to give Banu misinformation so Banu would tank his own game. Uh, no, I mean, I think Bonnie was a mess and, and getting coaching from Q. Was uh, it the blind leading the blind? Yeah, it was the blind yeah. leading the blind. <laughs> well, I think a little, don't you think like a little bit of his 
a little bit of it is optics like we've been talking about where like I think Q and Banu both are emotional players, right? Like they both are like reactionary and like emotional, but Banu, Banu's emotions came out in a more like teary, more like, oh, for lack of a better word, like a pathetic kind of like, you just like want to, you want to swaddle him or something. Right. You, know, you want to like take care of him. And Q's comes out in a more like defensive sort of ma like macho way. And so unfortunately, I think like from the optics of that, Banu's going to get screwed every time and Q is going to get put on a pedestal, you know, in some way. So I guess in that way, I could put a little justice for Banu. I mean, justice for Yanu, just like... <laughs> Just justice, justice, justice for Yanu, you know? Anyway. Here's my Jerry Springer last thought, right? As to why I am not mad at Q. Q has been Q since day one. Since we just, like, you. he been out here, he been, he been killing people. He been a murderer since day one. We just didn't recognize the signs because, like, look how he switched on Jelinski. And I said that on the first episode. It's like, I know you want to get rid of Jelinski because you said, like, he's weak. We can't trust him. But I'm like, but I still feel like you can. And Q and Kenzie. And Kenzie. Q, after that second episode, Q came back and said he was quitting in when he was laying out on the thing. Like, here's the thing, like, where everyone's, like, so surprised. But Q has really been Q this whole time. And I just don't think that we wanted to believe it. And so, again, for this episode, it did something for me in Q where it's like, he's been Q. We just, had, like, he's almost been like, what's the opposite of hiding in plain sight? Like, it's like, <laughs> you're just, you're not even hiding. Like, again, that was the test. He like, play hide and seek. But I don't want you to hide if there's no seek. <laughs> but I mean, that's why that's why it's like, yeah, maybe I don't even fault Q that much anymore at this point because of his consistency. But I fault all other nine people. <laughs> last night. That's who I'm faulting. And yeah. again, to Q's point, mistake, must mistake. everybody's making a mistake, but Q. Wow. Hashtag mistake. This season is mistake. <laughs> I whenever. I don't listen to a lot of exit interviews like live, but whenever Q gives his exit interview as the winner or whenever he goes, I cannot wait to tune into that to hear Q's story because I just feel like, who was it? President Carter or President Nixon, the fireside chats? Because I want to tune in to like to hear Q. We need a Q deep dive on, on Survivor News. Curve ball. Well, damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm ultimately I'm I'm sad Tevin ended up going because uh, well, yeah, I yeah, thought uh, I thought there was a lot more from him that I wanted to see, and yeah, he could have won the game. Flowers because he was so fun, such a great narrator, a sharp player, and I I, I hope we get some more Tevin because I I really thought he was going to go farther in the game and we we're going to see him really rise to the occasion. But I thought Tevin could have won, so. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, the, I don't know, maybe this is like, I, it's like, I don't want to bring it up. It's like, how do we bring it up with last minutes or whatever, but I'm not happy with Tim soda, Tevin, boom, boom, boom. I'm not like, I'm not happy about it. You know? So after so, making history, I know. And I know. And actually when I, when I, when I like read it, the first tweet that said, and I was like, Oh snap, like this is fucking epic. This is true. The, my first, I hate that my gut instinct was damn. I think it's not, this is not going to be the cookout season of Survivor, which I was kind of hoping for. <laughs> but anyway. I agree. And I thank you for even bringing that up, Izzy, because uh, I think that, again, I don't think anybody is targeting or whatever, but I think that it There's something deserves it's something to be said, right? Uh, so I second that. But also, uh, Tevin, I think that he was a phenomenal uh -huh player uh he was the voice of this season i they think need to that play his intro for every season for every for time. Time. i ahead. call him tevin angelo because he speaks like maya angelo he was so funny he showed up as his full authentic self we saw that he was a challenge beast we saw that he could make alliances we saw like so many things and again i just for me uh I was so happy that Jam, Jam won his season. Uh, but for me to see a, a just someone who I could relate to, look like me, sound like me. And again, for him, 
being himself, not to be a liability, and for them to actually take him out the game blindsided, not because he's other, but because he is a legitimate target and a threat oh, to that. Tevin, I take my hat off, and I am so proud to be a part of this Survivor franchise that I personally can witness something like a Tevin playing, and uh, I love Tevin, and I stand for Tevin, and I hope that he knows that he was a legitimate threat, no mistake. Yeah. And he is a king. And yeah, I'm just so happy we had people like a Tevin. And if there is a second chance, I hope that his Tevin, name Tevin, is at the Tevin. top of the list. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We love you, Tevin. We love you, Tevin. Yeah. Yes. Anything else, Jack? No, but <laughs> the floor is open if anyone wants. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm I... I'm excited. That's all. Uh, be- you know what? The- I still got mine on too. It feels like um it aggressive. <laughs> it does. It, it, it really like- kind of like yeah. I feel like this is- the opening. That I just- <gasps> ah, no, is it? <laughs> I just yeah, actually, like, Wendell, sit down, okay? Because you, yeah, know, what? you know what? I decided the hood should be the other way. <laughs> yeah, Jack is right. Jack is right. But Izzy, thank you so much for joining us this week. It was uh, such a great and fun discussion. Jackery is always amazing. Wendizi, thank you so much. Uh, Chicago, get ready. The baby boys are coming. Boston, gear on up. Philly, we're coming home. And New York, we're arriving. This has been your Survivor News. Mistake. <laughs> Big <Can't stay. laughs> Survivor News. Survivor News. Survivor News. Survivor News. Survivor News. Survivor News.